What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode one, the first official vlog for the journey. And we've got a wonderful episode for you today as I make every mistake possible while filming a blog. I hope that you will uh, click that subscribe button below and also hit the like because we have lots of great content coming up, including an epic trip to Vegas I'll tell you about at the end of the video. Now, in preparing for this vlog, I made mistake number one. I was studying a really cool iPhone hack that allowed your screen to be black and save battery power and being conspicuous while you're recording at the table. And I never actually got out of that mode. And then in the process of trying to reset my phone, I tried to hold the button down on the side and ended up calling 911 because I could not figure out how to cancel the call in this mode. With that out of the way, we are finally on our way to Bloomington, Illinois, home of Illinois State University, who has a world-renowned theater school that has graduated some incredible actors and actresses such as Sean Hayes from Will & Grace, Jane Lynch from Glee, and who can forget John Malkovich from the one and only Rounders. Pay that man his money. Today's game is a 1-2 No Limit game with a $300 cap at the Bloomington Moose Lodge. Yes, you heard me correctly, Moose Lodge. We park and head into the lodge, pick up our buy-in, and patiently await a seat where I make my second mistake as a vlogger. Make sure you set your phone to do not disturb mode or your pretty video gets interrupted by the first call you receive. Fortunately, thanks to some high quality professional reenactments, we can dig in on some hands. We get off to a hot start in hand one as we are dealt ace king off in the button. It folds around to us and after raising to six dollars, the big blind defends. We get a flop of ace eight six rainbow. The big blind checks to me and I make a simple c-bet of ten dollars. Villain folds and bam, we have won our first pot of the vlog. This is so much easier than my first marriage. One orbit later, we are again on the button when we are dealt ace ten offsuit. We raise to $6, the small blind folds, and the big blind again defends. This time the flop comes 10-5-5 five, five, rainbow. Villain checks, and we again put a spicy $10 seabed out. Villain calls, and the turn is now an offsuit 7. I'm not worried about any kind of straight draws here, and while his call is a little scary, if he's floating with any pocket pairs here, his range is weighted towards hands we beat, as he shouldn't have any over pairs. So I downsize from an 80% pot bet to a 50% pot bet of $16, and our opponent calls again. The river is a brick deuce, and our opponent checks. At this point, three streets of value is a bit ambitious, and I decide to check behind, and our opponent shows down the king five off for trips, and now we're down a bit. Now ahead of this next hand, we had two people join the table. The guy two to my right has been decently aggressive and carries himself like he has good cash experience. The guy directly to my right sat down and immediately announced that he had an hour to double up or go home and has not missed a flop since. We get four limpers to our right when we peel six eight suited in the small blind. I can't say I've ever seen any sims for six way pots. Being that we're pretty deep, I think I made a small mistake here by just calling. The big blind checks and we're now six ways to the flop. The flop comes queen eight six rainbow. There is zero chance that this pot is getting checked around with Mr. 60 minutes of poker on the button, so I happily check to go for the check raise. It checks around to the button who sure enough fires $6 into the pot. I expect him to call super wide here and there are a lot of straight draws on this board, so we check raise chunkily to $25. It folds around to the gentleman two to our right who cold calls our bet and the button folds. I admit I'm a little perplexed at this point. We block all the strong hands, assuming he doesn't limp hands like queens and ace queen. And there are a lot of draws out there. The turn is the ace of diamonds, putting two diamonds on the board. Again, we block ace eight, we block ace six. We can get value from hands like five, seven, seven, nine, nine, ten, jack 10 picked up a double gutter and all the backdoor flush draws that got there as well. I fire $25 again into a $68 pot. 
Villain Calls. The river is an offsuit three. The board is a clean run out and we have two options. We can bet fold or we can check call. Given how much of his value range we block and how many bluffs we unblock, I decide to make the decision to check call. We check, villain fires $45 into the $118 pot, we snap call, and villain shows queen six off for the better two pairs. Blockers can bite me. Down around $100, we do top off our stack. And one orbit later, we are in the small blind again when it is folded to us and we look down at jack of hearts, nine of hearts. I open to six dollars and the big blind calls. The flop comes at nine seven seven rainbow. Our hand is somewhat vulnerable and we need to bet for protection. Our opponent also can flop all kinds of straight draws, weaker nine X and overs in addition to actual sevens. So we bet ten dollars on the flop. Big blind calls and the turn is an eight of hearts giving me a straight flush draw. Our options at this point are bet call and check call. We have too much equity to fold at this point, and while I would like to bet and continue to put pressure on weaker draws, our opponent started the hand with 50 big blinds, and I really don't want to get put on an awkward spot if he raises, especially with how tight passive he's been this afternoon. So I like to go for the check call. Our opponent actually checks behind, and the river is the eight of spades. We have a very clear bet fold for value here. I bet $10 into $30, and our opponent snap raises to $20. We fold and flip over the jack nine suited and flip villain flips over eight nine for the full house. This session is definitely not going according to plan. We finally get the camera working better late than never, right? We're dealt king jack offsuit in the hijack here. We open to six dollars. It folds around to the big blind who calls. Flop comes at jack seven two rainbow. And while it's somewhat of a dynamic board, it's an extremely dry board. So we decide to see bet closer to half pot and fire $7. The big blind calls. Turn is an offsuit eight that makes the board a bit more juicy. Villain checks with $27 in the pot. I throw a $25 chip out and announce $15. And our opponent calls again. The river's a nine. I'm already resigned to our fate. Our villain checks, we check, and he of course flips over nine seven for two pair. We fling our cards into the muck and after a couple hours of play and being down a couple hundred dollars, I am ready to call it quits and make the drive back home. I can leave now, even with grandma and KGB and halfway to paying Petrovsky back. Can't lose what you don't put in the middle. Deal. But you can't win much either. We decide to stick around till our big blind and in the very next hand we're in the low jack and the guy directly to our right straddles. We look down at queen 10 offsuit and with only two hands to go and position on the maniac to our right with a straddle, we decide to make a loose min raise to $10. We get three callers and the straddler also decides to come along. The flop comes jack 6-3 rainbow. Not a lot going for us. It checks around to us. We actually decide to check behind here rather than betting this five ways. And it checks all the way around. The turn is an offsuit three and again checks around to us. At this point with the small blind and the straddler both checking, I feel fairly confident that no one has a jack. I decide to take a stab and throw out a $25 chip. I unfortunately get a very quick call from the cutoff as well as the small blind. The button and the straddler fold and now I'm in a horrific shape heading to the river. But fortunately for us, the river is the queen of spades. The small blind checks to us. We decide to go for a thin value bet here at targeting jacks and medium pocket pairs. In retrospect, I think I went way too small here and missed out on a lot of value. But I throw out another $25 chip. The cutoff folds, the small blind side calls, and we rake our biggest pot of the night. And while it's not enough for us to get back to even, it feels like a huge moral victory as we end our session. It wasn't the win we wanted for the first vlog of this series, but we honestly ran really bad today. We also made a few mistakes that were completely our fault. And the best thing we can do is study up and get ready for what is going to be a massive week of content. I'm getting to join Bet on Drew and John Party on the ACRV tour. We're gonna to be renting an RV and taking a cross country, five different stops between Philadelphia and Las Vegas as we head out to the World Series of Poker. There's gonna be live vlogs, TikTok videos, YouTube videos, you name it, lots of content. Make sure you're following all of us on Twitter. The links are down below in the description. And again, please make sure you hit that subscribe button below hit that like button below you want to get notifications as all of our great 
great content comes out. As we head to the World Series of Poker, try and put a stamp on the WSOP in one of the biggest opportunities of my career. I hope you guys will be along for the journey. It's going to be exciting. That's it for me, Rob Gardner. We'll see you guys soon.